All right, everyone, welcome back to your last lesson in this unit, and we're just going to get started here. Kind of made this kind of funky design here, and I just uh, I'm asking the question: How could you describe each part of this design? So today we're going to talk about how everything we've learned so far is kind of connected. And fractions, decimals, and percents are related. They are three different ways to describe parts of one whole. And just as some facts as I, as I write, write them in red here, a fraction can be written as a decimal or a percent. A decimal can be written as a fraction or a percent. And a percent can be written as a fraction or a decimal. And just a reminder, as we learned last time, that you can use a percent to describe any part of one whole, and we know one whole as 100%. So I've kind of just illustrated this here. This picture, we can write it as a fraction, a percent, or a decimal, and all of them can be interchanged depending on how we work with the problems. So let's go over some examples. What percent of this shape is shaded? And just to remind us that percent means out of 100. So we need to write an equivalent fraction with hundredths. So for example, you might say, well, three quarters right now, there's four equal pieces, three are, are shaded green, are, is the fraction that could describe this picture. But we're trying to get percent, and percent is out of 100. So somehow we need to change that and change it to 100. Well, the only way we can do that is we multiply this by 25 and remember with what with fractions whatever you do to the denominator you must do to the numerator or vice versa so 3 times 25 if you think money here 3 quarters is 75 cents so 75 now we can do something with this 75 out of 100 is 75 percent so we could say 75 percent of this shape is shaded what percent of this set of counters are yellow Okay, well, first thing we should figure out is how many counters do I have? I have two rows of six. So it's out of 12 so far, okay? And uh, that are yellow. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six out of 12. Now, just in the last uh, example, I had six out of 12. Can we change this 12 into 25? We cannot, we cannot. So let's, let's work on this six twelfths here. We know six twelfths as, well, it's it's half of it. Half of it is yellow. Six is half of 12. Can we do something with that two to change it into hundredths? Yes, we can. We can multiply by 50. And remember what we do to the one side of the fraction, we have to do to the other. So we're going to multiply the top by 50. We have 50 over 100. And 50 over 100 is 50%. Okay. One last example here. So a fish tank contains clownfish and goldfish. The ratio of clownfish to goldfish in the tank is one to four. What percent of the fish are clownfish? Well, the first thing we have to acknowledge is this is not possible. And the reason is clownfish are saltwater fish and goldfish are not. So they would never exist together. But for the sake of my picture, let's just pretend they can. Just move, getting that out of the way right now. Um, so one to four is a part to part ratio. Okay, we can't really do anything with part to part ratios, but we can do something with part to whole. So we're talking about clownfish here. So there is one clownfish. Now, one clownfish out of all fish as the whole, well, there's one, two, three, four, five clownfish. So we could say there's a one to five ratio of clownfish to all fish. Well, remember we can change this, uh, a part to whole into a fraction. So we can work with this now, one to five. Well, can we change this into a percent? Well, it has to be out of 100. And we can do something with this. Something, five times something is 100, and that number is 20. And we're gonna do the same thing to the numerator, so we have 20 out of 100. 20 out of 100 is 20 percent of the fish are clownfish. So there you go. That is our last lesson relating ratios, percents, and decimals. Hope you enjoyed it. And just remember, in life, math happens. Take care.